What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we are taking another track from Hack the Box. So basically as you can see it is CREST CRT track. And it contains a collection of machines that may prepare you or that actually supposed to prepare you to take the certified registered penetration tester track. This is the original page of the track. You can get more details by reading through the uh, page here it includes the recommended preparation material the cost the uh, booking of this of the exam the format the courses that you may take while you are preparing and here you can see how to book the exam so the exam is not the subject of this video but I just went through the main page if you want to get more details now so the main subject of the video is to prepare for this exam by solving all of these machines in Hack the Box. So we're going to go ahead and start this track from now on and in the upcoming videos. So the first machine is Bounty Hunter. So what we're going to do, we're going to solve this machine in this video. So I have spawned the machine, it's now working and I have done the preliminary nmap scan on the machine as you can see we have two ports 22 and we have 80 and along with the open ports we have as you can see the hey HTTP title and the server version in addition to that I have done the necessary enumeration on the directory structure of the website using GoBuster I used the board list common.txt and I enumerated the PHP files so I found interesting files here, among them is the db.php. So if you browse to the site here, we can see there are three main navigation links about contact portal. If you take your time and scroll through the site, you can see multiple areas where you can start your pen testing. You can see as you can have contact forms, input areas are all always subjects, uh, areas for the uh, web application penetration testing, such as vulnerabilities such as XSS, um, SQL injection, um, HTML injection, GS injection, so on and so forth. Okay, so if we go to portal here, as you can see, we have this statement portal under development, go here to test the bounty tracker. We go here and we can see we have input boxes where we can submit information about the exploit that is discovered or the bounty and we can submit the information to the back end so say test input anything submit and if, the, if the, it says if db were ready would have added so it means the database is not ready that's why the input we have uh, entered here uh, has been returned as an output so basically the, that because the database doesn't work if you try to navigate to the database page we have discovered earlier using GoBuster DB, as you can see, it doesn't display anything. So that's where we hit the wall, nothing to do further. So what we decided to do is fire up perp suite and click on intercept is on. We want to intercept the requests. What well, we would like to see what it looks like when we <coughs> submit information here, uh, how the post request, where it goes, what are the parameters, if anything we can take from there. So let's click on submit. And this is the request. So the request goes to tracker blah, 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 dot PHP. Uh, that's the API endpoint where the input of the user gets handled. And as you can see, we have the data here. So most probably this is the data we entered Base 64 encoded. And as you can see, we have the character 3D 3D with percentage. It means it is URL encoded because percentage 3 uppercase D equals to or it it is it corresponds to the equal sign. Two equal signs at the end of a base 64 string are expected actually. So when we see this, it means they are it means the data here is URL encoded. So let's copy that and verify this. Go to decoder and we decode as URL. As you can see, we get two equal here, two equal signs. 
If we decode this again as base 64, we get the content that we originally submitted. And as you can see, it is in XML. So knowing or discovering this, we can move on to another idea, which is testing the website for XML external entity injection attack. So we have covered this in the past videos. If you want, you can go back to these videos and see how XSC looks like. But we're going to cover this again in this video as we will need to do that. So basically, if you go back here to the page, so one of the input fields here is vulnerable to XML external entity injection attack. How to do that, we need to, to find out and try. So first, we need to create a payload, XSC payload. So XSC payloads are available everywhere, but instead of ser searching the internet, I'm going to grab one payload from my notes. Let's see here. Okay. Let's test a payload where we try to read the password file in Linux. So that payload would work, but of course it needs further modification to comply or to conform to the uh, current formula here. So we need to submit this information here along with the payload. So what I did, I created a payload here because I did the challenge before um, shooting the video. So that's the payload I created. first line the encoding and the XML then we declare the doc type equals to foo you can input anything you want here the element will be bar and here the payload itself XSE XSE is the uh, name of the payload as you can see here and I have here um, this is the PHP filter but for now we're not going to need to use the PHP filter so let's put it as equals this one let's take file copy this one okay and then comes the other tags required other tags required in the input process so first if we go back to the page we have first the title the CWE the score and the bounty reward. So, so ideally, we would try to place the XXE payload in one of the input fields. If it doesn't work, we follow with the other field. So we, we actually do the input, we place the payload sequentially between these fields, one followed by the other one, until one of them works. So we start with, we start with the title. I start with the title here. So I called the entity name which contains a command to read the password file now if the title doesn't work if the payload doesn't work in title tag we would move this to the cwe tag okay so why we created this inside a file why didn't we try this uh, using purpose directly with the intruder because as you can see the all of all of the data that we input uh, is expected to be encoded with base64 so that the API endpoint would be able to handle the data and return the output so we cannot just take the XML code here and use it instead of the base64 we have to encode it using base64 so the proper way is to store all of this inside the file and then let's save and then encode it with base64 so let's use the command line base64 we will need to prevent the line wrapping so we'll use w0 and the name followed by the name of the file we get the base64 string representation of the xml payload we go back now let's send that to the repeater go to repeater and here we replace this with our own payload and test the response 
as you can see we get nothing it means there is something that should be corrected in the pair let's go back and take a look so here should be let's try three because we want to escape the forward slash character let's try now Oh, okay. So I I think you know what I forgot. I forgot to URL encode this. So control U to URL encode this and send. And now we get, as you can see, the contents of the password file. It means that the payload is working. Okay, fine. Let's take a look at the users here. As you can see, we have development. Development is a user that can log in and has a home directory, as you can see. In addition to development, we have the root, of course. Other users that can log in, we don't see any. So we have only development at root. So knowing that, we take a note of the user development. We may need it later during the privilege escalation and during the process where we need to uh, get the first shell on the system. Okay, the payload is working. What is the next step? If you remember, this file, db.php, it may contain sensitive information about database, including username and password. So what we need to do, we need to read this file. But this file is PHP, so most probably it's not, we're not going to be able to read this file using the payload here. We need to edit the payload using PHP filters. That's why I use PHP filters at the first. When I first opened the payload, you saw PHP filter, that's why I use it. So let's grab the PHP filter from here. edit the payload and here instead of etc I'm going to put slash the main root directory of the web server is expected to be under var www html and then here the web files so let's put db.php save that and then create a new page 64 let's do that again URL encode the string and as you can see in the response we get page 64 string so Let's take that and decode this with the decoder. Decode uh, space 64. And indeed, we get sensitive information about the database login credentials. Username and password. Okay. So, what you can do now, you can try this password, right? And log in to the SSH server using the user development we discovered earlier. So let's open a new tab and say SSH development. Copy the password. And we are in. Okay. LS PWD. We are under home directory of development cat user. That's the flag of the user, cat contract. So this note says, I will be out of the office this week, but please make sure that our contract with SkyTerrain Incorporation gets completed. This has been our first job since the RM-RF incident, and we cannot mess this up. Whenever one of you gets on, please have a look at the internal tool they sent over. There have been a handful of tickets submitted that have been failing validation and i need you to figure out why i set up the permissions for you to test this good luck so you need to discover this internal tool so if we see if we check opt 
we can find the directory mentioned in the notes here so cd skytrain incorporation ls we have as you can see the tool ticket validator and we have the invalid tickets our job here is to find out why the why the, why the invalid tickets are invalid or why the tool complains about the tickets being invalid so if you go to if we try to run the tool so basically uh, ticket let's run this one at least to find how it works permission denied okay ls dash la so as you can see the script is owned by root and the group root so we cannot run this the only way to run this is to check our sudo privileges sudo dash l and as you can see we can run this script using this exact command as root without the need for password but how so sudo dash u root and then let's run the tool see how it works please enter the path to the ticket okay so the path is opt skytrain and then we have invalid tickets and then we have to choose a ticket since we didn't um, have a look at this directory we need to let's say three okay let's uh, all right let's go to invalid tickets so these are the invalid tickets all right let's now run sudo the tool again and enter one of these tickets the full path will be starting from opt and selecting one of the tickets please enter the path okay destination new haven invalid ticket fine okay let's take a look at this ticket cat 3 skytrain ticket to new haven ticket code some numbers issued end of ticket okay so to find out why it is invalid we have to take a look at this code of the main script so let's go back get let's use nano for this okay so first line or the first function handles the opening of the ticket file okay so if it is not md it's going to tell you that the wrong file type okay that's the first one evaluate evaluate the ticket file evaluates a ticket to check for irregularities code line none let's see here as you can see that the first line of the ticket should start with a sky train bound character sky train okay then it should start to let's see if not start with ticket 2 and then we have the ticket code okay scrolling down that's the main function let's enter the path to the ticket that's the prompt we got when we first uh, run the script so here is the check evaluate ticket if result valid ticket if not invalid ticket okay let's go back up so a valid ticket should first the first thing is to have an md file extension and other thing is to start with pound character skytrain incorporation if i equal to one now that's the, the uh, where to send the ticket and then we have the other criteria where we have where the ticket should have ticket code in the second line if code line and i equal code line okay if not start with so as you can see here it should start this the, the other the line after ticket code should start with two asterisks and then so after the, the first two asterisks until the plus sign 
there should be a number here assigned to the ticket code variable this integer if divided by 7 the result should be 4 how to find that number multiply 7 times 4 will be 32 so a valid ticket should contain 32 as the first number between the first two asterisks and the first plus sign okay now if all of this if, if, if 32 is found in the ticket all of this will be passed to the evaluate now here's the problem we actually spoke earlier in a couple videos about the problem of using evaluate function in Python and PHP and we said that it executes code directly without validation um, so that's the problem with this code we have to take advantage of this fact first we have to write a valid ticket that uh, matches the conditions mentioned in the code here and then we have to inject a payload that if executed or passed to evaluate will, will actually return the output of system commands so let's do that okay so first thing we need to go to invalid tickets cat any ticket okay this one is fine let's copy that and we're going to create a new ticket let's go to dev where we can a directory where we can write some sort of input or files so touch or nano test md we paste this so skytrain incorporation now we need here to also use ticket to bridge port and then we have to put ticket code oh we have them here okay okay so the first line is okay the other line is okay third line is okay now here we have to edit this it should not be 31 remember that the first number between the two asterisks and the plus sign should be a number that if divided by 7 the result should be 4 so there you go we have to change this to 32 and that's it let's see first if this is the valid ticket so we run the script so the path is the path to the script or the file we created as you can see it says a valid ticket now the next step is to inject the payload or the python payload let's go back to the ticket itself okay so here where can we inject this so 32 410 86 and then we can input a plus sign here and put in the payload let's search for the payload here okay let's see here this one is reverse shell we're not interested in taking reverse shell because we are already on the system we have already access to the system so we don't need a reversal we need some payload here so let's take this one and after system we select the payload we want to execute or the uh, command we want to execute let's go back and paste this okay so system and here say id save the ticket and run again Oh, problem. Syntax error. We forgot to put the closing single code. So nano test. We 
running that again supplying the path to the file and indeed as you can see we have the ID of the user so the command got executed and the payload is successful let's go now and turn this from a single command that returns the ID of the user to a command that gives us a real shell on the system from development into root so all you have to do is to execute or edit the script first the file sorry so from id we're going to execute bash that's it have a new shell in the current view here <coughs> id and this is the root why the root by so by the why why it escalated to root because the script here or the main script the validator ticket validator is run as root right that's why the bash or the command old commands passed to the script are run as root so as you can see we got the root user <coughs> then ls and that's the last flag so that was it guys i hope you like that and i will see you in the next video